All right, today's video, we're gonna talk about remote tuning, uh, what it is, how it works, what you need to do it, the pros and cons of doing so, and uh, how it might benefit you. If you're new here, my name is Joe Simpson. I own Tempest Racing. Uh, we do a lot of tuning here in-house. Uh, we also have a mainline Pro Hub dyno that we rent out and either do uh, you know, rentals with other tuners, people tuning their own cars, and then also a lot of remote tuning as well. The main reason for me doing this video is uh, we keep having emails back and forth with numerous people regarding remote tuning and some other options to help them with what they need and um, kind of surprised how many people have no idea what I'm talking about when I mention remote tuning. Um, so basically, uh, I think just being able to send people a link to this video will describe it a lot better than just me typing the same thing over and over again in emails. So basically, if you're not familiar with remote tuning, to break it down uh, real simple, um, it's when you and your car are maybe at your house and uh, say me and my computer are at my house and I can actually log into your computer through my computer and then view data from your vehicle and make changes and basically tune the car. So usually with remote tuning, when possible, uh, we'll try to get the car set up and running pretty close before we start scheduling dyno time and setting up an appointments and so on and so forth. So basically like you'll be maybe in your garage and uh, I can just be hanging out in my living room. Uh, we can coordinate our schedules. I can log into your computer and uh, we can get you up and running. Um, after you're up and running, then uh, we can either schedule dyno time here or if you're a thousand miles away, you can find a dyno near you or uh, you know, we've done this with people um, on other sides of the world in countries I've never heard of before. So the whole concept is uh, actually pretty cool. Um, and ironically, through this YouTube channel specifically, I'm getting a lot of people want to help with their vehicles uh, from all over the world. So it's really cool to see and uh, being able to help out a lot of different people that normally you would have no communication with uh, is really cool and uh, I'm enjoying it. So uh, let's show you how this works. All right, so basically for this to work, you're gonna need a laptop computer and an internet connection. And uh, your internet connection needs to work wherever the car is. I know that probably sounds stupid, um, but we get it a lot where somebody's in the living room, everything works great, and then they go out to their garage, driveway, or parking garage, whatever it is, and uh, the inter internet connection isn't strong enough to actually do anything. Um, so before you schedule something, just take your computer to where your car is and make sure your internet still works. Now, depending on what ECU you have, what software you're using, um, there might be some hardware that you need, uh, like HP tuners, for example, you need their actual HP tuners cable uh, in order for the ECU to communicate with the laptop. Um, so make sure you have that sorted out as well. Uh, most aftermarket ECUs just need like a USB cable. So those sometimes can be a little bit easier. And um, ECUs that have real time connection uh, make, make things a lot easier too. So something like HP tuners where you have to email files back and forth. Um, the whole process isn't quite as easy, but it's still totally doable. Just in that situation, you're probably going to be making some emails back and forth um, outside of just simply connecting to the car. Uh, but the data logging and that side of it will still just be handled remotely. All right, so you have your internet connection, uh, you have your cables, you have everything you need to make all of this work. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is talk to whoever it is that you're working with and figure out which platform they want to use to do the actual login. Um, we generally we use a program called Team Viewer. It seems to be the most popular that a majority of people use. Um, I've seen one or two people use something else, but uh, basically you just go to teamviewer.com. Uh, you download the free version of the software, and uh, it, it only takes a few seconds to download. It's not a big program, and then uh, that's about it. Um, usually save the file to the desktop so it's easy to uh, to find. And then the next thing that you'll need to do is send. Uh, the login credentials to whoever it is that you want to log into your computer. So once you open up the TeamViewer software, uh, you can see uh, there's kind of two options. There's the allow remote control and then there's control remote computer. So if somebody's logging into your computer, you will use allow remote control um, and they will need your ID and your password. And generally what most people do is they just uh, take a picture of it and send that over. 
Um, sometimes the software will kick you in and out during a session, so you may have to send uh, that information more than once. And sometimes it'll kick you out, but you still use the same ID and password. So it's a little bit finicky, but it's free and I don't know, not too many things are free. So if you can't complain a whole lot. And then if you wanted to log into somebody else's computer, um, you would use the control remote computer. Based off of the nature of this particular video, I think everybody's basically gonna be using the allow remote control. Um, if you're trying to log in and tune other people's cars, you're probably not watching this video. All right, so now you got your software set up, you got your internet connection, you're connected to the car. Um, the tuner is logged in and making their adjustments. Um, the concept might sound a little crazy if you've never seen it before, so uh, we can go ahead and show you what that looks like uh, on a car sitting over here. And um, yeah, so this whole process, it works really good for uh, basically everything. So obviously if it's a, a fresh tune from scratch, um, you can use it for that. Um, for me, where I like it a lot is making small adjustments, maybe to a car that we tuned here in the middle of summer and now it's the middle of winter and we need to make a couple idle changes or something like that. Um, anybody that's been here has seen that uh, I'm generally multitasking and doing several things all at once. Um, so this gives me an opportunity maybe to, you know, be doing a couple of things at home and can log in and and make some changes. Um, the other thing is uh, I've been traveling a lot with some of the other fabrication stuff I have going on and uh, this still gives me the ability to tune people's cars while I'm maybe not at my shop. So um, the whole concept's great. Uh, we also work with um, a handful of other tuners as well that use our dyno on a regular basis. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it, it's just, I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I don't know every system. I don't know every situation scenario. So, um, and then there's also guys that have maybe been having the same guy tune their car for the last 15 years. Now they want to put it on a hub dyno, but they still want the same guy to be able to tune it, but he's moved across the country. Um, I have absolutely no problem running out my dyno, uh, regardless of who's tuning it, whether you're tuning yourself. Uh, your friend, some big name tuner in Dubai or Lord only knows where. So uh, again, it, it frees up uh, so much time and, and money because you're not having to pay for hotel rooms and plane tickets and, and all of that good stuff. So um, anyways, that's enough rambling. So uh, let me connect a couple computers to this car and show you what this looks like as it's all uh, happening. Here's our computer with our software opened up. Take a picture of it and then you would send this to whoever you want to log into your computer. Then over here it says control remote computer. We're going to enter in this information now. So we enter it in, click connect, and pop up for password. Quick log on. Takes a minute to load. Now you can see the mess of a des desktop on that computer. Click here. This is our tuning software for this computer. And you can see we're looking at the same thing. So let me start the car and see if we can't uh, watch a couple of real-time updates happen. All right, just so you can tell, there's nothing plugged into this computer at all. And here's everything live on this screen. You see our fuel is about 13.6, 13.7. leaned out a little bit since then uh, so what we can do here tables so we're idling right around here all right let's just add 30 percent fuel
So you can hear the engine change. Uh, and now we're super rich. So if we just hit undo, pops right back up. So yeah, and basically we're using this computer to control that car. And even though we're in the same room right now, uh, we could do this literally with the car on the other side of the world. So uh, it's super convenient. So basically the pros and cons of doing remote tuning are some shit, I don't know. All right, so if we go over the pros and cons of remote tuning, uh, we'll start with the pros. Um, basically, you can tune any car anywhere, uh, as long as you have an internet connection. Uh, makes street tuning a little bit easier too, as to where whoever's tuning the car doesn't need to ride around with you and uh, you know potentially get in legal trouble or you flip the car off the side of a mountain or something like that. Um, so there's a safety aspect of that. Um, and uh, you can do other things, like uh, here's a picture of, I was tuning a car while I was giving my daughter a bath, I was at the track. Um, and uh, again, I like doing a lot of multitasking, so uh, who knows what kind of different things I can be doing while I'm also remote tuning a car. Um, especially when there's breaks in between, like say you do a dyno run and then there's 20, 30 minutes before the next one. Um, it gives me or whoever's tuning the car ability to you know, do some other things. Another pro of uh, the remote tuning is you can have somebody tune your car from anywhere. So if your favorite tuner is uh, here in Maryland and you live in Florida, um, you know, they can tune your car, um, assuming they do remote tuning. Um, and again, this, you know, this works all around the world, so there's no limit as far as uh, how far you can go. Another pro I mentioned previously is different kind of tune touch-ups. Um, I don't know, say you want to turn the boost up two pounds in second gear. Um, now we can log into it remotely if it's something that you're not capable of doing yourself. Um, to track tuning, you know, you want to go to the track on Saturday and uh, make some changes, you can do that. And then you go to the track Sunday, the weather's totally different, the track's totally different. Um, you can, you know, have your tuner make those adjustments, uh, assuming they're available. And uh, some of the cons with remote tuning are you need to have a little bit of car knowledge to have this done or maybe have somebody help uh, with the process that um, kind of speaks car, so to speak. Um, and the reason that is, is you can have a laptop hooked up to a car and all of the data on the screen can look perfectly fine, um, but the car may be doing something weird. Um, you know, have some hesitations, be down on power, or something along the lines of that. A uh, perfect example is last week I had a car on my dyno. Um, customer said it felt real good, felt real strong. Uh, dyno said otherwise it was down two or 300 horsepower from where it should have been. Um, data log looked fine, everything appeared to be working as it should. Um, but being here, being able to see it, touch it, feel it, smell it, all that good stuff. Uh, we were able to determine that, you know, the VTEC function wasn't working. Um, so things like that, uh, I guess it's preferred to, to have the car in your possession so you can see. Um, but, uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, as long as somebody's around the car that understands how everything works and maybe has seen a car get tuned previously, um, usually you can work that side of it out. Um, heavy diagnostic stuff's a different ball game, but uh, you know, again, you could potentially save yourself a ton of time and money if uh, you try and do the remote tune deal. The guy on the other end doing the tuning's like, hey, something's not right, and you kind of cut the session there rather than spending another 12 hours trying to diagnose it. So uh, you kind of got to weigh the pros and cons of the situation on that one, but uh, you know, again, it. it can make things go a lot smoother. Another con is not being able to hear the car. Um, there's a lot that can be determined by hearing a car. Um, so sometimes, you know, some videos or uh, I've even done some remote tuning with uh, somebody on the other end of the line on speakerphone and, you know, you can kind of hear the car that way. Obviously, it's not the same as, you know, if you were there with the car. And then uh, spark plug reading. Um, I've actually found that spark plug reading 
can go pretty well using photos if taken properly. Um, and with text messaging and everything else nowadays, it's, it's not that big of a deal to just send a handful of pictures. Um, but some people like to look at plugs, you know, in person and magnify it and everything else. So um, just something else to think about. Another both pro and con of remote tuning is the ability to do it on different schedules than typical business hours. Um, it's a pro because obviously, uh, you know, you can be at home and log into someone's car at 11 o'clock at night or whatever it works out to where your schedules line up. Um, but the downside is that some people don't understand that people that tune cars have lives outside of that. Um, so, you know, they're expecting you to log in right when you're in the middle of eating dinner with your family. Um, and uh, some people can get really pushy and really nasty as far as that goes. Um, it's, you know, generally they'll get cut off by whoever's tuning the car. Um, so uh, just don't be that guy. Understand that people have lives outside of this stuff. And uh, especially once families and kids are involved, uh, that stuff becomes really important. Um, another con of remote tuning that I don't necessarily see as one, but some people do, is you will have to give somebody access to your computer. Um, been kind of surprised how many people are like weirded out by that. Um, so if that bothers you, I don't know what you have on your computer that's uh, so top secret, but um, either one, you can put it in folder somewhere that's maybe off the desktop um, and not easy to find, or go to Walmart and buy a $200 laptop and, and try and use that. Um, that doesn't have, Lord only knows, whatever you're trying to hide on there. Um, so, and then the other thing too is, is you can keep an eye on and, and sort of watch what they're doing um, as they're logged into your computer. So if you were to see them open up your top secret files, you can, uh, you can just exit out of the team, view, team viewer program or whatever program you're using and stop that connection altogether. So um, I've never had a problem with that. Um, as far as anyone logging into my stuff or me logging in anyone else's stuff, um, I don't care what else you have on your computer. I'm just looking for your tuning software, some data logging, and uh, try and get you back out on the road as soon as we can. All right, hopefully, uh, if you weren't familiar with what remote tuning is, uh, now you are. And uh, if you didn't know what remote tuning was, you probably didn't watch this. Um, or if you did, I don't know, maybe you learned something, who knows. Um, but uh, the next video I'll probably do is going to be, uh, I have some new goodies coming in for the dyno that's going to give uh, a whole lot more options as far as cool stuff to play with and more testing to do and, and things to show. So. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, if that type of stuff is something that you're interested in, uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, we can do some more comparisons and how-tos and all that good stuff. So um, until next time, thanks for watching.